Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going over the front door VRF feature for DMVPN Phase 3. I uh, just want to quickly go over the network design before we jump into the equipment. Uh, basically what you're looking at here is we have two spokes with a hub router. Um, our design goal is that we're going to advertise a default route from the hub through the DMVPN to both spokes so that none of the traffic from the spokes can go directly to the internet. We want that traffic to go up to the hub where we have, you know, a next generation firewall or something like that um, in order to inspect the traffic. So just remember, again, our design is that we want to learn the default route through the DMVPN and send the traffic to the hub. So let's take a look at our lab equipment and see what the uh, state of the network is. Um, you can see we have from our hub, we have both DMVPNs up, DMVPN spokes up, I should say, uh, router two and three. Uh, we also have the two neighbors up. Um, if we go down to one of the spokes, let's go to R2, show IP, uh, let's do route EIGRP. We're learning loopback one from the hub. So what we're going to want to do is let's go into the hub and let's go into ERGRP. And we're going to want to go into the tunnel interface and advertise the summary address of all zeros. Okay, so let's go back down to R2, which is one of our spokes, and well, we could see that the loopback was uh, suppressed, but we're not learning the default. So let's go to show IP RGRP topology, and we are learning the default from R1, but the feasible distance is infinity. Now, most of you should know why this is happening, but let's do a show IP route. And sure enough, we know it via static. So the static route has an administrative distance of one. It's going to be preferred over the EIGRP route. This makes sense. If we go back to the to the diagram, we could see that hostname R2, which has a WAN IP address of excuse that mark of 2111. And then we have 10.1.1.1 up here. Um, this is a, you know, this is simulating the internet. So we need a default route from our ISP in order to even form the tunnel. So let's go back to the equipment and let's go ahead and enable the front door VRF. This, the steps to do this are we first need to define the VRF. We're going to call it INET and we're going to enable it for the address family of IPv4. All right, great. Now we want our internet link, which is gig 110. We want this to be in that VRF. And as you can see here, our IP address, IPv4, disabled and addresses removed due to disabling VRF. Um, when you add a VRF to an interface, it basically removes the IP addresses. Um, so this is not a change that you're going to want to do during production hours. Um, here we go. Enabled. Now that we have our VRF with our interface in it, the last thing we want to do is we want to put the default route in that VRF. And remember, this is the default route for our ISP link. So now if we do show IP route VRF INET, there's our route. Um, we're going to want to do this on both R2 and R3. Uh, you don't need to see me copy, I mean, uh, type the same things over and over again. So I'm basically just going to copy and paste them in there. Um, so it's the same thing. We're defining our VRF. 
we're going into the interface, putting that interface in the VRF, and then we're going to add a default route for the VRF. So now if we go to R1, well, the MVPN is not up. Why is that? Well, just because we added the default route into the VRF and we added our WAN link into the VRF doesn't mean that the tunnel knows to use that VRF in order to form the tunnels. So this is where, and I'm going to do this on all the routers, CovT, interface tunnel 1, this is where the tunnel VRF command comes in. So it's tunnel VRF INAT. Basically what this command is going to do is it's going to tell the router that when it's trying to form the DMVPN tunnels, it should look to the VRF's routing table instead of the global routing table. It also allows the global routing table to be used to forward traffic over the tunnel. This will make sense in a minute. Um, but what I'm going to do is, let's see if the DMVPN is up. It's one of them is up, but I'm going to shut and no shut the tunnel um, on all the routers. This is because I'm using virtual routers and it can be a little finicky. All right, let's check the DMVPN again. DMVPN is up. Show IP ears, your neighbors are up. Let's go back to our spokes and show IP route via GRP. All right, you can see now we're learning the default route from R1 through EIGRP over tunnel one. And it's not affecting our show IP route VRF INET, that default route. So remember what's going on here is on R2, the DMVPN tunnel is using the default route in the VRF to establish the tunnel, but it's still using the global routing table over the tunnel. And we can see this in action by if we look for the route, show IP route for 3.3, .3, we can see the network's not in the table because show IP Ceph 3.3 it's using the default route over tunnel one. So we can ping it. There we go, we'll ping it again just to, all right. And now if we do the show IP route, three out three, we're learning it through NHRP from uh, router three over tunnel one. Now, if you remember, this is the NHRP is going to be the next hop override route. This is make this is so we know that DMVPN phase three is running. So there you have it. Um, basically, the front door VRF is going to be a way where we can, you know, we could still use a default route over the tunnel, and it's not going to impact the default route under the tunnel. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, leave them in the comments before. Uh, leave them in the comments below, or leave them on my blog. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video.